Hello everyone, welcome to Mr. K Talks Tech YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to see about the Azure Data Factory Studio tool. So this is the Azure Data Factory Studio. As you can see here, there are a lot of different options over in the left side. So we call this as tabs in Azure Data Factory. We have Home tab, Author tab, Monitor tab, Manage tab, and also the Learning Center tab. So let's see all these tabs one by one and what are the different things that we could do with all of these tabs. Pretty much we use this entire uh, Data Factory Studio workspace to develop all the uh, ATL pipelines and all the data transformations, things that we could do using the Data Factory. As you can see here, I'm using the uh, Data Factory that we created uh, in the last video. Uh, so if you haven't seen the last video, please check it out. It is like uh, giving some information about how the Azure Data Factory works and how we could create the Azure Data Factory Studio. So after creating the Azure Data Factory Studio, and if you go to the Azure Data Factory, and if you click on the Launch Studio button over here, and it will take you to this workspace. So this is the workspace which we'll be using to create all these uh, ETL pipelines and stuff, as mentioned earlier. Cool, so now let's get started with this tour. Uh, as you can see here, the first tab, which is on the left side, is the Home tab. So this is how it looks like. As you can see here, there are a lot of other options. For example, there is a new button over here. So if I click on this, as you can see here, we have different options like pipeline, power query, uh, data flow, data sets. So you can create all these services directly from this home tab. And also the operations like ingesting, orchestrating, transforming the data, and also something which is like configure SSAs to deal with the on-premise databases and stuff. And also, as you can see here in the bottom, we have something called recent resources. For example, if you're working with any pipelines or any other connections and stuff using the Azure Data Factory, and you can see all the resources that you have been using recently, you can view this here so that you can quickly access it. So right now, as you can see here, we don't have any pipelines or anything over here because this is a brand new workspace that we created uh, in the last video. That's the reason we are not seeing anything over here. So basically this home tab is all about accessing the different things that you can do uh, very easily. Uh, for example, these options like creating the pipelines, orchestration, and also the transforming data all belongs to the other tabs over here. But using the home tab, you can quickly access it. Cool, so now let's go to the main part, which is the author tab. So if I click on the author tab, as you can see here, we have different options over here. So this is the main tab that we'll be using for any development things that we can do with Azure Data Factory. For example, if you want to create a pipelines or uh, the options like change data capture, creating the data sets, data flows, and Power Query. All the development things can be done only using the author tab. For example, the first part is the pipelines. If you want to create a new pipeline, then there is a plus icon over here. So if you click on this, uh, you can click a pipeline and you can create a new pipeline. So I'm not going to create any pipelines or any other options over here as part of this demo. So this demo is mostly around like giving a quick overview of all these options available in Azure Data Factory Studio. Cool, so now let's see a quick overview of all these options that are available in say the author tab. So let me start with the pipelines. So Azure Data Factory uses the pipelines to execute a number of activities uh, in a series of steps. For example, you can create a pipeline to actually copy the data from the source to the destination. And also you can create an activity to transform the data and all of the stuff. So the actual uh, ATL pipelines can be created using this pipeline option uh, under the author uh, tab. So the next option is the change data capture. As you can see here, this is under the preview mode. So in Azure, if something is mentioned as preview, it means that it is quite new. So this change data capture is a new feature that has been added to the Azure Data Factory. So what does the change data capture mean is like, it is more like the type one or type two concepts in data warehousing. For example, if you have an existing table uh, and if there is a new data comes uh, to that table, do you want to insert that new record or do you want to update the new record? Those kind of things can be configured using this change data capture. So the next option is the data sets and I'm not going to explain this data sets in this video, but I'll be telling the reason why I'm not going to explain this uh, at the end because the next video will be about this data sets. And with the data sets, I'm not going to explain another two options, which is the integration runtime and the linked service connection. Uh, so I'm not going to uh, explain these three options. The first one is the data sets, link service connection, and integration runtime in this video. 
and I'll tell you the reason why I'm not going to explain in this video because I want to explain these three concepts in the next video because this is one of the most important thing in Azure Data Factory. Let me skip this data sets for now and we'll move to the next part which is the data flows. So this data flows is like a UI based uh, data transformation tool. Some people is not really comfortable in writing the code for transforming the data. So for the for those people's data flows is one of the great options they could use uh, in data factory to transform the data because in data flows since it is a UI based uh, feature uh, you can drag and drop some of the custom functions available inside the data factory uh, to transform the data. For example, uh, there is there are two tables and you want to join these two tables. You don't have to write the SQL query or a Python code for joining these two tables. Uh, instead, you there are some custom functions like join or union or aggregations available inside the data flows. You can use that to uh, transform the data. So I'm not going to create a data flows now, but I'll be uh, making a separate video about this data flows, like how we could uh, do the data transformations using the data flows. Okay, so the next part is the Power Query. So I think most of you have already used the Power Query if you have used the Excel. For example, if I open the Excel, uh, as you can see here, uh, we have a tab over here in the Excel, and many of you know that we can write some functions over here. For example, if you want to do a sum, you can write equal to sum. As you can see here, these are different functions that you can use inside the Excel. So we call this as a Power Query. Uh, so this is also mainly used for transforming the data. So this option can also be used under the Author tab in Azure Data Factory. So now I think you have a rough idea about what are the different things that we could use under the Author tab for actually developing uh, the ETL pipelines and all other data transformation step. Now let's move to the next tab, which is the Monitor tab. So if I go to the monitor tab, uh, as you can see here, we have a lot of information over here. So this tab is specifically used for monitoring all the things that you develop using this author tab. So as the name suggests, it's mainly used for monitoring the different things that you're using inside the Azure Data Factory. As you can see here, there are a lot of different options that you can monitor. Uh, the first one is the pipeline runs. So this one is mainly used to monitor the pipeline. For example, if you create a pipeline using this auto tab and you, if you run the pipeline and uh, you can monitor the pipeline runs coming to this part, as you can see here right now, we don't have any pipeline logs over here, but if you're running any pipelines, uh, you'll be seeing uh, the information over here for you can see the pipeline name, uh, the run start, uh, the run end and the durations, like how long the pipeline has been running and how it has been triggered and what is the status, whether it's a success or failure. And if it's a failure, then you also see some of the error messages of why the pipeline has failed. So those information can be monitored using this uh, pipeline runs. So there is other option called trigger runs. So when you create a pipeline using the author tab, you can also set up the triggers for the pipelines. So there are different trigger options available. For example, there is schedule trigger, there is tumbling window trigger, there are storage events trigger, and also there are some custom triggers that you can enable on the pipelines. So these uh, triggers can be monitored uh, using the trigger runs under the monitor tab. So I'll be making a different video about the different trigger options that are available uh, in Azure Data Factory, which is a schedule, uh, tumbling window, storage events, and also the custom uh, trigger option. And the next part is the change data capture. So we just saw like what is the change data capture uh, in the author tab. So if you configure that using the author tab, and if you want to monitor this, then you can come into this uh, section. And the next part is the runtime and sessions. So this is the integration runtime, which I mentioned before. I told like there are three concepts that I won't explain uh, in this video. The first one is the data sets. And I also mentioned other two, which is the integration runtime and also the linked service connection. So I'm not going to explain about this integration runtimes now. Let's go to the next part, which is the data flow debug. So we have seen like what is data flows uh, in the author tab. So this is like to monitor uh, what are the data flows that you create uh, using the author tab. And the other one is the notification, which is the alerts and metrics. This is really, really important. Uh, for example, if you want to get uh, notified whenever there is a pipeline failure or a pipeline success or whatever it may be, you can create an alert uh, using this option over here. 
for example if you want to get a, an email uh, if there is if there are any pipeline errors then you can come over here create a new alert role uh, and you can set up all the uh, criteria and stuff and you can configure whether you want to receive an email or sms or some kind of other notification as well and you can configure that using this option under the monitor tab which is really useful uh, this, this is just to make sure like everything is working fine or getting notified when something goes wrong and all of this stuff cool so this tab is mostly around like the monitoring of all the things that we are developing using the other tab so let's go to the next part, which is the most important part, which is the manage tab. Uh, so inside the manage tab, so this is more around the configuration settings that you can enable on different things that you do using the Azure Data Factory. For example, under the manage tab, there are some factory settings, general factory settings that you can enable. Uh, for example, the, as you can see here, this is the billing report and the default one is by factory which means that by the whole data factory if you want to get the billing report for per pipeline then you can enable this option and the other one is the linked services so this is the third part which i want to discuss uh, in the next video uh, so as mentioned previously three things are the data sets linked services and also the integration runtimes so i'm not going to discuss about these two now uh, let's move to the next part which is the microsoft purview so the Microsoft Purview is completely a separate service, uh, same like Azure Data Factory. How Azure Data Factory is a separate service, similar to that, Microsoft Purview is another service where you can integrate with Azure Data Factory. The Microsoft Purview is one of the governance tool in Azure. You can integrate Microsoft Purview with Azure Data Factory Studio, uh, where you can uh, enable some of the options like data discovery or data exploration and all other stuff. So this is about some of the connection settings. Now let's go to the source control, which is the Git configuration. So in the previous video, when we are actually creating the Azure Data Factory, we enabled an option called configure Git later. This is most around like, for example, integrating the Azure Data Factory with the Azure DevOps or GitHub account. So for example, if you want to configure a repository, you can come over here, click on configure button over here. And there are two repository type it is supported uh, at the moment. The one is, uh, Azure DevOps and the other one is a GitHub. So you can uh, select any of the options and then you can uh, use the repository URL to integrate Data Factory with the repository. So this is mostly around like saving all the changes that you are doing over here into the repository and also uh, using the concepts like CACD to deploy all the changes to the multiple environments. So I'll be making a separate video about how to configure Azure Data Factory with the Azure DevOps uh, in one of the future videos. Uh, cool. So now let's go to the next part, which is the OM template. So this is one of the most important uh, concepts in Azure in general. Uh, it's not specific to the Azure Data Factory, but it is specific to the Azure. OM stands for Azure Resource Manager. So what does this mean is, uh, in Azure, what are the resources that you create? Uh, even though it is a UA-based uh, thing that Azure Code offer, but the underlying code is a JSON structure, which we call this as the OM template. For example, if I go to the resource group that we are using in all of our tutorials, so this is the resource group that we are using. Uh, and in the left side, there will be an option called deployments. So if you click on this deployments, as you can see, we have deployed a storage account and also the data factory because in the resource group, right now we have only two resources, right? Data factory and storage account. So if I go to the deployments, I can see these two things. Uh, so if I open the data factory option over here, and if there will be an option called template. So if I click on the template, as you can see, uh, there is a JSON structure, and this is called OM templates. So even though you are using a different options in the UI to create this resource, but in the back end, it is all generated in the JSON structure. So you can use this JSON structure, that is the OM template, uh, to deploy to multiple environments. For example, if you want to create the same data factory again, then you can use these templates to create it into a completely separate environment. So if we jump back to the Azure Data Factory, there are two options called Import OM Template and also Export OM Template. For example, in this data factory, we don't have any pipelines and any other stuff. 
But if you have another data factory where you have a lot of pipelines, a lot of linked service connections and all of the stuff, and you want to import all the pipelines that are in the other data factory to this data factory, then what you can do is you can use this import ARM template option to import all the uh, pipelines uh, that are created in the another data factory. In the similar way, if you have different pipelines uh, created in this data factory and you want to move all the changes completely to a different data factory, then you can use this export ARM template. As you can see here, there is an option called export. So if I click on that export and uh, it file will be downloaded. So this will export all the uh, changes that you have done in the Azure data factory as a JSON format. So if I open that folder, as you can see here, uh, there are two JSON files that has been created and this JSON files can be imported uh, into the Azure Data Factory to import all the changes that has been done. So this ARM template, the JSON structure will be used in the CACD to move the changes from the dev to prod uh, or to the multiple environments and stuff. Cool. So now I think you have some idea about the ARM templates. So now let's go to the next part, which is the triggers. And we have already discussed the triggers, like if you want to create your triggers for the pipelines, you come to the Manage tab, come to the Trigger option, and you can create a new trigger. And the next option is the global parameters. So this is more like a global variable that you can declare on your programming language, and you can use that variable in all the places in the programming, right? So similar way, you can create a global parameter over here. And once you create a global parameters, it's like a, it's like a key and value. For example, you are creating a parameter called email, and the value is like Mr. K talks tech at gmail.com. So this global parameters called email can be used in all the pipelines that you are create, uh, creating using the author tab. Cool. So the next part is the data flow libraries. So this is like similar to the global parameters. And uh, if you want to have any custom functions or any custom libraries uh, that should be used in the data flows, then you can create your libraries over here or any custom function. And once it is created, and then you can use the uh, custom functions in the data flow section. Cool. So the next part is the security. Uh, so under security, we have two options, which are credentials and customer managed key. So this credential is more into the authenticating uh, using the Azure Active Directory to connect to different resources. And if you want to create a credentials, uh, then you can come over here to create it. Uh, so this is more into the security stuff. And uh, right now you don't have too much worry about this. So the next option is the customer managed key. Uh, we have already seen about this while creating the data factory. So we have enabled the Microsoft managed key to encrypt all the data that is stored uh, in the Azure Data Lake. So if you have uh, any specific to do all the encryption, then you can come over here to create a new key and the Azure Data Factory will use this key to encrypt all the data. So these are some of the information about uh, the Manage tab. And finally, we have a tab called Learning Center. So if I go to the Learning Center, as you can see here, this tab is mainly used to actually learn more about the Azure Data Factory. For example, there are some tutorials that you can watch to learn uh, the different features that you can do with Azure Data Factory. And also there are some other videos where you can watch about this Azure Data Factory. And also there are some templates. For example, if you want to do any kind of particular task and you can search for that uh, task in the template and you can use the template to do any kind of task which is available in this template. So basically this learning center tab is more around learning Azure Data Factory. So it's mostly around the help section where you can use these options to actually learn more about Azure Data Factory. Cool, so now I think you have an idea about the different options that are available in Azure Data Factory Studio. But as mentioned before, I didn't uh, explain about three main concepts, which is the data sets from the author tab. And under the manage tab, there are two options called link services and integration runtimes. So these three are the most important thing in Azure Data Factory. So all these three are mainly used for connecting to the different data sources. So in the next video, I'm going to explain about these three concepts uh, with an example. So that will make more sense to you because I don't want to cover these three important topics in this video. Thanks for listening and I hope you have learned something new and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Uh, until then, cheers. Bye.